Hello there. So I promised I would go live tonight at seven o'clock and so here I am. I'm here to answer all sorts of questions that you may want to ask about wedding planning. So tonight I'm just gonna answer some questions that I have received online or anything live that you have for me, shoot questions about wedding planning as a career, wedding planning, um, how to get started, or even the training programs that I offer, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about. So before I get into the questions and answers, I'll give you a little bit of background information about me for those of you who don't know who I am. I am Taya Yunus. I'm the owner and master planner at Inspired Occasions Weddings and Events, and I am located in the Capital District of New York, so that's the Albany area. I've been planning weddings uh, for myself in business uh, a little bit over 10 years. We're going into our 11th season. And prior to that, I did corporate events. So that's how I got my start. I was doing corporate events and realized that I love that kind of work, but just wanted to be a little bit more creative and also be my own boss and have the flexibility to do what I love to do, but also be a mom. And I am a mom of two and I work from my home office. Um, and um, I really have enjoyed um, having a career doing something that I'm passionate about while also having the opportunity to be present um, for my kids when they're here. My kids, as far as they know, have always had a stay-at-home mom, which is kind of funny because I work like crazy, um, but they got off the bus and I was home. I might have been in my office, but I was always here for them and kind of in touch with what they're doing. So that's why I started doing what I'm doing. The other thing that I got into about a year, a little over a year ago, I launched an online training program called Basic Training for Wedding Planners. And that is through my website, weddingplannerclasses.com. And the reason that I started doing that is that ever since I have been in business, people have been asking me, how do I do what you do? And I've taken a lot of interns over the years and taught them how I do what I do. And many of them are enjoying great careers in the events industry, but there's only so many interns I can take at a time. So I wanted to find a way to train more people to do what I'm doing so that they're doing it well and they're elevating the reputation of wedding planners and coordinators at, in general. Because very often you'll find when you're just getting started and you, and you go in and start talking to vendors, they either have a really good experience with planners or they have a really bad experience with planners and coordinators. And it is in all of our best interest that people have great things to say about wedding planners and coordinators. And people start to think that they are as a necessary part of planning a wedding as a photographer is or a DJ is. And so I wanted to teach people who really wanted to learn how to do this and do it well. I wanted to teach people how so that they would be doing great work and hopefully be up and running quickly, um, quicker than a lot of people who have to learn via trial and error. So I launched that program a little over a year ago, and that, you know, that training is available online anytime through my website. But I took it a step further. I wanted to have a little more interaction with my students. And so I started partnering with local colleges, offering a certificate course through the college. And the advantage to doing that is I have the opportunity to teach a group of students all at the same time and really be a little more hands-on on, on pulling them through that program um, in a timely fashion, but offering feedback and support as they are learning the skills that I'm teaching them. So one of the reasons why I am going live today is that I have um, been reaching out to a lot of people, letting them know that basic training for wedding planners is starting the spring semester through Hudson Valley Community College, which is here in this area. Class starts on February 5th. I'm taking 10 students only for the spring because we like to keep it small so that we can keep it very interactive and more like a small group than a large class. Um, so registration is open now and it's open through February 1st. So I wanted to give people the opportunity to learn a little bit about what this program is and ask questions. But I also wanted to use this time to um, answer questions about just event planning as a career because how do you know that you actually want to learn how to do it if you don't know about the career as a whole. So I have some questions here that have been submitted ahead of time. So I will go ahead and start answering some of those 
and then I'll get a, a little bit into um, the course and what's involved. So I got this question um, this week, and I thought it was really interesting because it's kind of a loaded question, and it's very broad, but it's an interesting one, and it got me to thinking. So um, this, this email came in, how can I begin my wedding planning project without money and experience? So this was the entirety of the email, and, you know, I think it's, you know, although it's a very basic way to pose the question, I think a lot of people do have that question. You know, how do I start if I don't have experience? How do I start if I don't have a lot of money to invest? So the, the one, the first answer I would say is wedding planning is not generally a project. It is a career choice. And with any profession that you choose, it's expected that if you're going to go out and do the job, um, you are going to need training and education in order to have the, um, the chops to go out there and do it and do it with um, on a professional level. So you would never want to go to a doctor that had no education. And you would never want to um, get on a bus of a driver who was never trained on how to drive it. Um, so the same thing applies to wedding planning. And I think it's one of the things that's that's a challenge for our industry is a lot of people might plan their own wedding or plan a wedding for a friend and feel like it easily translates to planning professionally. And the truth is when people are paying you a lot of money and they are putting this event in your hands, something that they're going to do one time and invest a lot of time and money in, and they can only do it that one time and they have to get it right. It's really important that you as their planner know what you're doing. So I would say you can't start planning weddings without experience. You need to get experience and education. That being said, there are opportunities for you to do that, to get education and to get experience. I had experience doing corporate events, but I did not know a lot about wedding planning and the specifics of that. So I went to a training program by a professional wedding planner, and I did have to invest some money in doing that. And then I had that opportunity to have a mentor who had done this before. Um, so I did not just go start planning weddings without having experience and training. So I would say, absolutely, your project can be start learning. Start learning and getting the experience and training that you need. And you can learn in lots of different ways. Yes, there are online courses. There are um, other planners out there that are taking on interns that are willing to do some hands-on training and experience in exchange for some extra help. But you can also learn a lot just by being a student yourself. Go out there and do research. Learn about the wedding industry. Learn about your market in particular. Um, there's lots of information out there and it doesn't cost a lot of money to find out what is happening in your local area. Who, you know, who the key vendors are, where, are, you know, what are the venues like, what are wedding planners in your area charging, um, what kinds of weddings are they doing. You can figure all that out and it costs no money. Now, in terms of the investment, if you are starting a business, I don't know of many businesses where you don't have to invest any money. What I can tell you is the cost can be relatively low for a startup, um, depending on what resources you have available to you. There are some tools that you have to have, and they would cost money if you don't have them. For example, a laptop. A smartphone. Those are things you're going to have to have in order to communicate with your clients, keep track of all of the information that you're going to be handling. If you have that, then obviously that's not a startup cost for you. If you don't have that, that will be an expense. So I can't promise anyone that it will not cost money because just establishing a business and filing a legal name is going to cost some money. But what I can tell you is how much you invest depends on what you have and how fast you want to start. It can be done relatively inexpensively. I have chosen to work in a home office for 11 years. 
I don't want to pay rent on a space. I like working out of my home and being able to come down in my pajamas and, and get some work done. Um, so I don't have to invest in that. I don't have to invest in inventory like you would if you were opening a store. So I can't promise you it's not gonna cost you any money, but what I can tell you is it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to get started. So I hope that answers your question um, in terms of how to get started without a whole lot of experience or money. All right, so another question that I get um, on a regular basis is how do uh, wedding planners charge and, and make money? So how you price your services as a wedding and event planner depends on really um, your preference and your market. But there are three main ways that people charge for their services. So the first way would be a percentage. So some event planners will charge a percentage of what that client is spending. So let's say it's $100,000 and you charge 20% of that. That's what your fee would be. Um, now, there's different schools of thought about whether or not that is appropriate. When I got started, I really didn't want to do percentages for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was working with clients who didn't have particularly large budgets. And one of the things I was really trying to help them was, was managing costs. So I didn't want my fee to depend on how much they spent or didn't spend because I never wanted them to think that I was going to convince them to spend more money so I would make more money. So I started out doing a flat fee. And in my area, that's generally how the other um, uh, event planning firms are charging. So for me, that's always worked. I figured out how much my services are worth and I charge that amount and it doesn't matter how much they spend. It's really more based on the amount of time and energy I'm putting into the service that they are um, hiring me for. So that is the other way, which is a flat fee. So you can do a percentage, you can do a flat fee, and the other is you can do hourly. And I do do some charging on an hourly basis. People can always charge me for consultation on an hourly basis. There are some jobs I do based on an hourly basis, um, and that can be very helpful and beneficial to an event planner because you are ensuring that you're paid for every minute of time you're spending on an event. So those are the three different um, pricing uh, strategies that you can use. I would say that you should do a fair amount of research in your area to find out who's doing event planning, how are they charging clients, um, and get a, a sense of price points. As someone who's just starting out, you are going to have to charge a little bit less than your competitors. Now, I'd be careful. You don't want to undercut people to the point that you're really um, throwing off your market. But there is something to be said is as you get more experience, you can charge more money for your services. So make sure you understand what the market is doing. That way, when clients are looking at you and they're looking at other clients, it's going to be easier for them to understand your pricing because it's in line with what the other kinds of quotes and proposals they might get. So that is how you charge your um, clients and you make money. Obviously, Every dime of what you make as a wedding planner doesn't necessarily go into your pocket. As a business owner, you're going to have to pay taxes. Um, you're going to have some overhead expenses. So you'll want to keep that in mind when you are figuring out what you want to charge for your services. If you are doing this as a side gig, you need to really um, consider how much you really want to make, how much is your time worth, and don't be afraid to price it accordingly. All right, um, so here's one question that came in, and this is, this is a really good one because a lot of people do start businesses while staying in a daytime job. So the question is, I have a full-time career, and I don't want patients to use my planning business to contact me. So how do I keep the two of them separate in a professional manner? And this is this is really kind of a, a common issue. The more people are starting their own businesses, um, and it doesn't even necessarily mean you have to have two careers. You could have like a personal life and a professional life that you would want to keep separate. So the main thing is you do need to establish certain things separately. So for example, 
email. You will be um, it need to set up an email, particularly for your business. Now, usually when you have a wedding planning business, you're going to have a website and there should be some sort of email component attached to the website. If not, there's Gmail um, account. You can set up a Gmail account simply um, for the business. And you just want to make sure that when you're using your smartphone, that your professional email is linked to your phone so that you are seeing your emails in a timely basis and able to respond to them in a timely basis. So you do want to have separate ways for people to contact you. If you want your mail to go to a professional address and not a home address, you would set up a PO box and then you would receive your business mail and use that as your address for the business. Now, for the telephone, it's a little more complicated and this is where you may have to invest some money and it really just depends on your comfort level. So for me, I use one telephone number. I use that for my personal life. I use that for my professional life. Now, most of the people who call me on a personal basis, they're in my phone. I see who's calling me and I answer, hello. If I don't um, know who is calling me, I always answer as if they're calling my business. And it has worked for me. It has been just fine. It hasn't been a problem. Some people are not comfortable with that and that's okay. There are some services out there that you can subscribe to that allow you to forward calls to one phone but give you an alert when it's coming into a business number. So you would have a separate telephone number and then you have your personal number. They would both come into the same phone, but you'd be notified when it's coming in through your business number so you can answer in a professional manner. Um, Grasshopper is the one that comes to mind, but I think there are other services like that. So if it's important to you to really keep that separate, you absolutely um, can use a service like that to keep things separate. The one thing I will say is if you are building a business, depending on what your current day job is and the appropriateness about it, is it is perfectly fine to talk to people about what you do. And you never know what business you can find in your day job. Not that you're gonna prospect for it, but if you know if it comes up in conversation, you know, if if you're at work and someone's saying, Oh, well, my, you know, my sister's getting married, oh, that's funny. I plan weddings on the side. Don't be afraid to tell people that you do have this as a side business. You'll be amazed how many people are really interested in this career in particular and will ask you questions. And sometimes someone knows. I've had, I've gotten referrals that way. When I first started my business, I had a day job and I talked to people about what I did. So don't be afraid unless there is some sort of issue with you talking about what you do, whether there's rules about not moonlighting or any of that kind of stuff, I would highly encourage you when you talk to people, tell people what you do. That's how people are going to know that you're there, that you offer that service, and they're going to they're going to send you business and they're going to be great sources of information for you. Um, they just talk to people. Don't be afraid. I think uh, too many people are trying to you know, have a persona that, you know, if you're working part time as a wedding planner, you should make it look like you're working full time. I don't think so. If you want to work part time as a wedding planner, I think it's perfectly appropriate. As long as you're taking the amount of work that you can handle. Be real with people. When you are authentic, that's when people connect with you. And if they want someone that has an office and um, works, you know, all day in their office doing just that, then you're not the planner for you. And that's, you're not the planner for them and that's okay. So don't worry about that. All right, so I wanted to just drop in a couple of questions here. I've gotten about basic training. Before I kind of answer those questions about the training itself, I will give you a little bit of background of what it is. So basic training is a program that I started that literally teaches my system for planning and coordinating events. So in this training program, I'm going to teach you all of the steps for basically starting your business, establishing um, connections with vendors, um, creating budgets, doing day of coordination, doing full service planning, creating a wedding day timeline, all the things that you need to do as a professional planner and you need to do with skill. I teach those skills and I also give my tools for doing that. So 
in our module on building a budget, you will get my budget template and you will be able to use that for yourself. So I give you the tools that I use and then I tell you exactly how to do it. It's an online training program. All of the training is done via video lecture. So you will hear my voice and you will see um, what I do. I'll be showing you the tools and, and taking you through exercises. Um, all of that is done via video. And then there are some quizzes to test you on your understanding of that. And of course, the downloadable templates and resources. Now, when I teach through the college, it's a little bit different. It's a little more hands-on and it's a little more interactive. In that uh, course, we all start at the same time, we all end at the same time, and we're all on the exact same module. So it's usually about one module per week. And in that period of time, you'll have video lectures from me on the, the uh, skill that we're working on for that week. You will also have the opportunity to participate in discussion forums with your fellow students. So we are all talking back and forth about what you're learning. And there are sometimes going to be assignments. And this is the opportunity you have to practice the skills and get feedback from me. So for example, when we get into the module about building a timeline, you will learn how to build a timeline. You will be able to download my timeline template. You will be getting a virtual client with their information and you will have the opportunity to create your own timeline. That assignment will be turned into me and I will look over it and give you feedback. And what's great about that is you have the opportunity to learn the skills, make some mistakes, make some adjustments, and you're not doing it on real clients. You're doing it on virtual clients and you're getting my support and my feedback so that you really learn the skill. Not just walk away with the tool, but you actually know how to use the tool. So that's what basic training is. Um, I had a question the other day about whether or not you, this is for students. Is this for young 20 something people um, that are in school? and are just starting a career. And my answer is this training is for anybody who wants to do this work. If you wanna learn how to do what I do, it doesn't matter to me what your background is, I will teach you how to do it. So if you are a college student that's trying to figure out if this is the career for you, then this training will teach you that. If you are a person who, like me 10 years ago, is reinventing yourself, and has decided that whatever your career is right now is just not doing it for you and you want to try something new, something that's exciting, something that's creative, and you want to learn what goes into it and you want to learn how to do it, then this training is for you. So if you want to learn, I'm here to teach you. So it's for anybody. And just because I am teaching it through colleges does not mean you have to be a college student. This is a certificate program, which means at the end of the program, you walk away with a certificate saying you completed basic training for wedding planners and it's coming from an academic institution. But you do not have to be an enrolled student in the academic institution. All you have to do is register online, pay the tuition for the semester, and that's all you have to do. You don't have, even have to be anywhere near this college. You could be in Texas. I have, um, I just enrolled a student in North Carolina. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can take this training from wherever you are. All right, let's see. I got this question last time. How much time do I need to devote to the work in basic training each week. So if you were to take basic training online, it is an entirely self-study program. In fact, I'm going to, do I have the opportunity to share my screen? I don't know if I do or not. Um, hold on, let me see. Of course, I can't figure it out. Okay, never mind. Um, I was gonna show you a, a little comparison graphic. I'll put a link up um, to it on this post so that you can look at it. it. It compares the difference between taking basic training online through weddingplanningclasses.com and then through the college because there are some distinct differences. If you're taking it online, it's an entirely self-study um, course. So you can take whatever module you, you want when you're ready to do it. You can take as long as you want on each one. With the one through the college, because we really want to start and end together, 
we're going to kind of push you a little bit to go a little faster and cover a lot of material. So each week, the, the video lectures are anywhere between one to an hour and a half total of lecture time. And then you're going to need an opportunity to do your assignments for the weeks that you have an assignment or your workbook if we have work in a workbook, or participating in the discussion and doing the quiz. So I would say anywhere from two to five hours total per week will be plenty. And some weeks are heavier than others. Definitely as we get into the later modules and we are working on um, you know, day of coordination and full service planning, that has a lot of material to cover. So it takes a little bit more time. Um, earlier on, it's a little lighter in terms of the workload. Because the video lectures are already recorded, it doesn't matter when you do your work. So if you work during the day and you want to do your lectures at night, you can absolutely do that. If you work at night, you want to do your lectures during the day, you can absolutely do that. I've had students that say basically they save their work for Saturday and they sit down and they do their work on a Saturday morning. So really that if you do have the flexibility, although there are deadlines for quizzes and assignments, um, they're consistent. They're always the same day each week. Um, you can just do the work when it works for you. Um, although the videos are recorded, um, we will have a couple of live Q&As kind of like this where we can all get together on video conference and I answer questions and I will also tune in each week with um, videos talking about what's coming up in the week and you always have access to me via um, email to ask any questions about your assignments and I, I'll get right back to you. Um, I want to make sure that all of the students in the course are really um, getting the information that they need and the support from me. So I want to make sure that everybody really understands the material that I'm presenting. And I think any of my former students will tell you I am not a stickler for deadlines. Um, so I, I understand that whoever's taking this course is probably doing other things, um, being a mom, working a day job, in school, taking other classes. Um, I, what's important to me is that you learn it, not necessarily that you meet deadlines. So there has not been an extension that has not been granted by me. Um, I just want to make sure that you get through the material because that's how you're going to learn. Um, but if you need extra time to do this and that, that's fine. That doesn't bother me at all. All right. Let's see if there's anything else here that I haven't covered in my tangents. So basically, um, what's different about the two? I think I just went through that. So basically, the, the big differences between Hudson Valley and taking it on the website is that Hudson Valley or the college track, because there's going to be some other colleges that are offering this um, summer, fall, doesn't matter which college. Um, Everybody starts on a certain date, ends on a certain date, and it's an instructor monitored course. So I'm keeping track of the students and where you are in your learning process, and it's a little more hands-on. The discussion forums are different. That is not available in the online version. The graded assignments and feedback is not available in the self-study online version. Um, and I will say that taking it through the college is a little bit of a bargain um, because the colleges like to keep um, tuition really accessible for a lot of people. Um, the tuition is a little bit lower to take it that way than it um, is to take the courses online. So you get a little bit of a savings for that. So anyone who is interested in finding out more about basic training, what's involved, how to register. I put a link in the post, so just click on that link. It'll give you some information about the course, and it will also give you a link to registration. Registration is open until February 1st. Like I said, there's only 10 spots. So if this is something you want to do, I urge you to register sooner rather than later. Class starts on February 5th. And the reason we have to cut off registration is because once you register, you're going to get a username and a password for the, um, the Blackboard, which is the application that you're going to be taking and receiving all the course materials on. And that has to be mailed to you. So you want to make sure that you're registering in time to get that by the time class starts on February 5th. If you have any questions at all that I did not answer tonight, um, feel free to shoot me an email at weddingplannerclasses at gmail.com. Happy to answer any questions on any of the topics that we talked about 
or on basic training. So don't be a stranger. Let me know if you have any questions for me, and I hope I will see some of you in the basic training classroom. Have a good night. Bye-bye.